Hello Flutter developers, welcome to my Flutter channel. In today's video, I will be showing you how to use color twin animation in transitioning from one color to another. And again, this video is in companion, uh, is a companion video uh, with my article that I published about color twin animation recently. All right, here is my uh, article about using color twin in Flutter app. And what we will be doing today, we will be implementing animation using color twin widget right here uh, for Android, iOS, and web app. And I'm running my animation here. So this is a very plain quiz card kind of like app, which has a one card and has an image and two options to choose from. When you click a, uh, the right option, say carnivorous in this case, it transitions from gray color to the blue color for the background of the image. When you click uh, the wrong option, which is herbivorous in this case, the color changes from blue back to gray. So let's get started. So this is my article which explains uh, this the main uh, overall code structure. So let me show you very quickly this article and then we'll go uh, head over to the Android Studio. So this project has uh, three parts to it. One is like the data, uh, how I'm showing my card item. So that's the one. And second is the UI component. And the third is implementing animation in the code. So the first is card item, which is uh, to represent this card. Uh, it is a data structure, the model, you can say. It stays in the item.dart in GitHub repo. And it has a four attributes to it, title, description, image, and animal type. I'm not using title and description here uh, in this card, but that is something it might be useful for a real app. And here, the way I'm uh, parsing the data, I'm assuming it's a JSON string, the, which is in the real cases could be passed from the network. Uh, but in this case, uh, to keep it simple, I'm hardwiring this code in my uh, sample data in the same class. So in the from map and the from data. So how this from data works is, it takes the data, uh, which is JSON data, and it runs the from map, uh, and the lambda here, and for each item in the JSON, so for example, this is an array, and this is one item of JSON. So it picks this one entry right here, and it passes it to the from map method right here. And then it go over about all the JSON fields right here and it fill in uh, the card item class and once we do that so this is how we start uh, start reading the json decode uh, sample dot json data which is where this string is passed and this card items will have an array of or list of all the card items and i can access the card items in my sample uh, class in the, in the widget ui class using the card item 0, 1, 2, and so on. In here, I'm using only one card, so I can just use card item 0. And next is user interface. In this user interface, as I mentioned to you, this is, has uh, two parts to it, one image, and another is the flat, panel, uh, flat button panel right here, which is in a row. And a position widget where to put everything inside is a container. And the user interface is in color twin dot dot file in the source code. So let's go over quickly over anatomy of this particular uh, UI interface. So the first thing is scaffold, which is a whole this screen, like blank screen. And when we add a bar to it, this is where we get this. And now container is the whole, this is the whole body. We put a container. And 
we add a position position is to give a position on this particular uh, big canvas where it would uh, so this is this is where we use the positioned widget and the child we add as a card which is this in the cell child we put a container and give a width and height to it so the width is uh, the school so how we took the screen uh, width we can use media query dot off context or size to get the screen size and then we divided by 1.2 to get the width from here to here and the same thing we do for the height oh sorry uh, excuse me the width is this way 1.2 and the height is this 1.7 divided by 1.7 of total uh, 1.7 of total of screen all right so next thing once we have these are position con uh, the card inside the position widget and the container so there's like a three layers to it we got our this whole container to put our more widgets on and we add a column column we use to align our widgets on vertically so since we are putting the things uh, in a vertical order we are using column in this case and in column there is a first image so that's where we are putting the image and the screen width as you say is the same 1.2 and 1.8 however the height will get reduced we want up to is up to here only that's why it's 2.2 you can play around with the values as you see fit so there is no hard and fast rule using the same exact numbers this is uh, we use to position the height uh, the sizing of the card all right the next is in decoration box decoration i use my decoration image which is nothing but my this image which i put in my assets folder so as you see in assets slash images slash carnivorous cat dot jpg this is where we put it for native platform for android and ios uh, all right and to query it we use decoration image decoration image asset image uh, method to get the image path so we pass to the image image path in the asset folder and i want it to be fit by my width so i use fit width that's why it's going edge to edge but you can just use fit or cover there are multiple options that you can play around so this is where uh, my image is placed now what comes next is it another container which is to keep um, a hold of these to my flat buttons so i have container and i want to give it a size which is if you see this whole size minus the top size gives me the dimension for the lower size which is the width stays the same but the height if we had we calculated like in the full height of the position that we calculated before uh, before 1.7 minus this height of the upper container 2.2 will give us this remaining um, place to put uh, to put our two buttons and you see we are using a row here because we are putting next to each other and two widgets and each widget has on pressed right here and uh, on press here so right now there's nothing in there but the idea is to uh, be able to animate the colors so when we click the carnivores it where the gray becomes blue and the herbivores when we click it's a wrong option so it goes back to gray so that's what we will implement next how to do that all right so now we are ready to implement our color tween animation so first thing what we do in the color this is my class uh, in the stateful is a stateful widget and this is my state so i let it i use single ticker provider state mixin to be able to use the uh, the animations you can read more about it here is the link so if you click it will take you to the link so if you go here 
what it is. It provides a ticker, so it's like a ticker that is configured to only tick while the current tree is enabled as defined by the ticker mode. So what it does, it, it keeps a count of uh, the time and based on that it change it gives an animation so what ha uh, so how we can implement it uh, so animation controller we use one animation controller so if there is a one animation controller we use single uh, ticker provider state mixin if we are using more than that then there is some there is uh, there is no single there is ticker provider state mixin where we can use multiple controllers so what controller does? Controller controls the animation. So we have this animation color. So this is a color tween and this animation. So what we do in our init state, we initialize our controller, animation controller. So to define it, we say have a duration of two milliseconds. And this is my uh, animation controller, this class. An animation which is a color tween is we give is two options begin and add. So what's a color tween? Color tween is uh, so it came from the tween word came from what between. So what happens between the starting and the ending color? So it's a begin and end. So it start from begins from gray and ends at the and uh, the blue. And between that the color changes happens which gives us the feel of we are uh, the animation is happening it which gives us like a more live uh, change of color animated colors so that's what the color twin means like between colors and you see as like we do it dot animate for this controller we attach it and we add a listener and a set state so actually you can uh, see the color change happen between the gray to blue and vice versa in the set state method so when the animation is running you can see if you put a bare breakpoint here your control will come over here all right uh, so now to hook the animation up in our code so what we do here so what we want what we want need to change we want our this container color to be changed as per the animation's current value so this is our container as we did here right here this is our container and we give the box decoration so in the box decoration in the color we give the animation value so whatever the current value for the animation is this will get updated here so uh, as i said here uh, like in the color twins it goes from one color to another so each state of the color are this whole the container will get so if I get carnivorous you see slowly slowly it's turning to a blue and it's completely blue so that's what it's making it feeling like animate and animated now it's going back to gray and if you put a breakpoint here in the set state it will go here control will come over here and now triggering animation so how we like where we start the animation so as we said before in our carnivorous and in our uh, herbivorous buttons on pressed will actually will trigger the animation so in the carnivorous we will play the forward animation so what forward animation is which start from begin from begin as gray and ends at blue that's a forward animation this is a forward it goes forward and now on the flat button uh, which is herbivorous runs through a reverse animation which means it goes from blue back to the gray so that's a reverse animation so what happens if I click it again nothing happens because it's already is gray all right and yeah, last but not least, don't forget to dispose your animation controller uh, right here. So how about a Flutter Web? So Flutter Web uses the very same thing 
uh, you can see my this article before that I referred here to how to get started on the web if you haven't done so far. So only two things we have to uh, keep in mind. We changes our material, uh, all the references, the Flutter uh, references to Flutter web. And second thing, we update our pub spec.yaml to the uh, web, uh, as per the web one. So I always keep in my repository uh, like pubspec.yaml.native and pubspec.yaml.web to be able to go between two branches, one for animation on one for, uh, sorry, one for animations web and one for native uh, so that it doesn't keep overriding each other's YAML. Uh, so that's how I do, and I do not commit pub.spec.yaml in my code repo most of the time. Um, I actually, I should not because uh, it will, I can always create from here, like copy over here if I'm in native and just drop my dot .native suffix, which was become pubspec.yaml for the native. And for the web, I will copy pubspec.yaml.web into pubspec.yaml um, in that particular branch. So that's the better way I found to be able to uh, switch between native and the web. Uh, well, keep me able to reuse most of the code uh, other than these dependencies that I have to do manually so far. So right now while I was running it, he, he, uh, yesterday I got this issue, uh, like this issue, I uh, which if, uh, after upgrading to my new version of Flutter, uh, this stopped working. So what's happening? It, it sees it goes everything fine, but I see a blank page and this when I inspect I get this error Like it's not defined and something is going on that I'm not very sure. So yeah, so this on github and once I um, Am able to get through this issue. I would be happy to update this article again uh, to uh, uh, Show you some screenshot on the web as well, but the code is available here on the animations web and it's the same code. Uh, uh, make sure you always clean and get your dependencies again before you run the web dev serve. So this is for today. Uh, I will see you next time in my next recipe. And don't forget to tell me what you want me to write and uh, make videos about for my next videos. Till then, uh, uh, take care.